You guys want to give me the pulpit? Yeah. Move some of that stuff in here. You know, we all should be involved in ministry, and we all are, really. Praise the Lord. Let's just let the Holy Spirit have this way this morning. Maybe this is what we all need to do. Is just you just serving God, you're obedient in Him, you want to do His will, and all of a sudden He puts in your heart something that He wants you to do. And if we don't step out by faith and do it, you think He's going to find somebody else to do it? Amen. Or do you think He's going to start shedding tears because He can't find anybody to do His will? Now, He's taking a bunch of people like us, of course, really messed up. True? Yeah. And some of us are still struggling and don't understand all this yet. But he's still working in you, accomplishing in you and through you what he wants to accomplish. And by the way, you don't have to know the whole Bible to go out and share the love of God with somebody. In fact, you know, the psychologists say 96% of all communication is nonverbal. So that means you don't have to know a whole lot, do you? Your life will show and it will radiate if we'll just allow that to happen. And I just kind of wonder. In fact, I was reading this morning and this last week, just trying to get something to share. You know, you can't just, I don't know how you do things, but you can't just get an idea in your, in your mind and say, I'm going to develop this, or I'm going to accomplish this <coughs> on my own strength and my own might, so I can show everybody how good I am, what I can do. That don't work in the kingdom of God. You might do that, and then you might impress people. You won't last very long, because the next week or whatever, after that you're going to have to do the same thing. But if you're seeking Him first, you got a passion to open your heart and let Him come in and work inside your heart. Then you, you're going to know what His will is, at least for that moment. And there's going to be such an excitement in your heart. It's, it's, it's so refreshing to realize this ain't you. I get so excited when I realize it ain't me. Does anybody else understand what I'm saying besides me? I don't like me when I'm me, unless it's the God in me. I mean... Because did you ever get tired of yourself? Just get tired of just being just a spoiled brat? And being defeated? Whatever. Well, if you trust God, I'll tell you something. I can't know how that could possibly happen. Especially if He's working in us. And He is working in us. How many believe God's working in us? To do His will and His good pleasure. Heavenly Father, God, just give me the, the words to speak here this morning. Because it's not my mind nor my heart. It's by Your Spirit. And that's what we need, Lord. We need more of you and less of us. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, a word that's been going through my mind just lately is execute. And I'm not talking about, you know, what they've done in the, the penal system lately where they've executed some people and put them, that's not what I'm talking about. What I've, it means to me to execute is do it. Not just simply talk about it, but do it. Put it into practice. Not just study it and learn it, but do something with it. And make it work. Now watch over it. See what happens with it. Be in compliance with it. Let it correct you. Make things right. Reform. Focus. Simply on what the Word of God says. How many like, have you ever had the Word of God become so alive in you? Amen. It's more alive. It's, it's more alive than anything that ever has been alive. It's more alive than you because it makes you alive. You were dead in your trespasses and sins, but God made us alive, and He will continue to make us alive Amen. because that's what the Word of God is really all about: working in us, giving us desires, the, the know-how, and everything to become more like what God wants us to be. And that's to get us closer to Him. Amen. And the closer we become to Him, the more we're going to get away from us. And the more other people are going to see in us Amen. him, and the more we want to do his will. Man, and then you just, when you walk and you bask in his presence, you know, if you would have known me the way I used to think, and God's changed me, because I was just about as ornery as a rascal, doing my own thing. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I know what rebellion was, and I was a chief of one of those. <laughs> I mean, I had enough sense to bend when it came time to bend. Bend a lot, but not break it. 
Well, every once in a while you break it and you go to jail for a little bit. But no prison, I didn't have that. I had enough sense to stop doing that. But as far as being just a downright, ornery, how do you want to say it? Jerk. That's what my wife called me. She realized my wife called me a jerk. And she's right. Most of the old, the old me was totally, totally a jerk. You know what? The more you just live for God, the more exciting this thing becomes. I got to tell you a little story that happened this morning. You know, I worked out a little bit, and, and the wind goes and walks. And so she came back, and she kind of looked, and she looked back outside. She came in and says, you know, there's a little cat across the street. It looks like it's hurt, but it's not crying out. It just looked up at me and looked down like, why don't you do something? And she said she walked all the way around her, probably her mile, wherever, her mile, wherever she walked. And she came back, and that cat was still there, just laying in the gutter. And she gets a hold of me, and I know her. <laughs> she got a hold of me, and she says, there's a little cat out there. And I just broke my heart, because I know her. And I'm thinking, well, what can I do? And I'm thinking, do you want another cat? No. Do you want me to go out and, and move it someplace else? No. And I'm thinking, well, what on earth can I do? And I'm just sitting there, and she's looking out the window, and I know she was thinking about it. She was on the phone, called Humane Society. And sure enough, about 20 minutes later, here they come. They picked up that little cat, put it in a little box, and the lady just took it away. And I was thinking, how many of us get so callous? Either by the word of God, we're just shining people off. We just really don't care. Let me tell you something. There's another example. What would you do if somebody spit in your face? End up in jail. Now, if you spent 18 and a half years in prison, you ran yards. And you knew how to fight. You know how to take people down. That's what you, you did most of your life. And somebody spit in your face. What would you do? Well, the first thing he did was grab his badge so he'd keep his hands steady. He'd turn around and walk away. And that was Danny. Amen. That was Danny. Amen. Amen. I was, I'll be honest with you. I told him, I said, I don't know what I would have done. And I've had it happen to me before. But there's times, he just recently, that somebody said something, that old something started back up at me. By the way, it never quits. But it's always under arrest if you let the Spirit of God be there to lead and guide you. I mean, I'm talking about. In fact, you know, a lot of times you're not going to find out what you're really made out of until you're challenged. Oh, I don't want that to happen to me. Well, then tell it. Start turning pages out of the Bible. And this is what happens to us. You know, I go, somebody should have. Somebody was supposed to prophesy this morning. They didn't do it. That's fine. I mean, that's not, that's not a... But you know, see, what happens is God's got so many things for us to do. Just like, could you deal with that little cat? I probably could have. You know, I mean, that's... But she couldn't. But well, how do we deal with people that are hurting? You know, we talk about the, the good Samaritan. The man was beaten up. Priest went by and saw him, walked the other way, the Levite, Bible scholar, so he did the same thing. But the half-breed, the Samaritan, and I believe that's like us. We're kind of like the half-breeds, aren't we? The down -down. But I pray we don't get callous. In fact, I pray that we just allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. In fact, I met a man last night I was very impressed with. Did a little marriage counseling. He's just out of prison. He just doesn't really know how to live this life. But he said, you know what, sir? I really want to do the best I can to serve God. Amen. And that's like Danny. Danny first got out of prison. He didn't know how to live this life. Somebody spit in his face then. <laughs> I mean, I've been on. But you see, as we grow, we're going to find out what we're really, truly made out of. Amen. But you got, we got to remember now what God has done for us. And then we got to execute. Get involved. And let the Word of God get involved.